The Mulsanne is Bentley's latest four-door flagship with an eye-watering price tag. Today I've arranged a test drive, but only after my mechanical skills have been tested on the engine production line. This is Bentley HQ, home to 4,000 employees who are responsible for building 8,500 cars in 2012. Today I'm joining the ranks of highly skilled engineers who hand build the iconic 6 and 3 quarter litre V8. It is one of the last handmade engines in production, with a heritage dating back to 1959. Each motor takes 30 hours to build. Engineering supervisor John is going to teach me how to complete the key stages. First, we meet Andy, who fits the crankshaft to the bottom end of the engine. This is the birth of the engine, isn't it? This is where it all this has is to start, exciting. Yeah. It's held in place by bearings mounted in casings that need to be hammered and then bolted into place. You know how to use this? Of course you can. You just hold it there. Yeah. And then just press the trigger. Okay. As the pistons go up and down, they turn the crankshaft, which is connected to the gearbox. Its rotation eventually turns the car's wheels. Well, this is, is the, the, the heart of the engine, isn't it? If this goes wrong, it, it's catastrophic, isn't yeah. it? Next, I'm shown how to make sure it runs perfectly smoothly. Each engine is put on a test rig, and then Tony listens for any discrepancies. How does someone train you to do that? When you get a bad one, which is not very often, you get to the different noises. I mean, if we had the noisy oil pump, yeah. it would be like a faint tapping or a scoring. Or if we've got gears not meshing right, that makes a knocking sound. With Tony's sign-off, the top of the engine can be completed and then the car's cylinder deactivation system is installed. To help the car get better MPG and better emissions, the Molson shuts down half of its V8 down to four cylinders when it's just being used around town on light throttle. But what's weird is the electronics live inside the oil, so when this inlet manifold is on and, and, the, and the heads are on, this all sits in oil. Then I'm taught how to fit the rocker shafts, which control the movement of the engine's valves. Each is screwed into place by a tool that links wirelessly to a computer, helpfully showing me which bolt to tighten and whether I've done it right, which doesn't happen every time. Uh, the screen's just gone red when I was doing this far left nut up, which represents a fault. Just go on it again. What, just, just go for a, a, an extra time. Yeah, I'll correct itself. That's OK. Oh, brilliant. It's not serious. Once ancillaries such as the starter motor and the exhaust manifolds have been fitted, the auxiliary belt is installed. Each Bentley engine is garnished with a plaque featuring the name of its creator. Wow, look at that. That's all right. And Thank you, you very much. Finish this engine off. <laughs> if you're going to have your name on an engine, it might as well be a fully hand-built V8, right? The engine is transported to the car assembly line. Heavily restricted to four miles an hour. It's the last time you're ever going to see a Bentley badge with restricted to four miles an hour on it. The process of installing the engine into the car is called the marriage. Doesn't the bride look lovely? With cellophane on her eyes. Lovely, lovely girl. Quite large. This rig will lift up to the car. Oh, OK, right, yeah. Yep. And, and then the guys will get ready, get underneath and bolt. As you can see them now, they're all getting into their positions. Yep. So yep. That, they'll get... They'll make sure there's no, nothing hanging down out of the way. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today, etc. There's lots and lots of pads where any tool that can come into contact with the body is protected. From here, the car's interior is installed and then finishing touches completed. And here's the finished product. Now, this particular car with its options costs over 270 grand. I want to know if the Mulsanne's historic motor feels at home in the modern world. This has got 752 pounds feet of torque, almost twice the torque of a Ferrari 458 Italia. Boy, does it pick up. It's a bit like being asleep and being slapped by Mike Tyson. It would take you by surprise, and you don't expect a car like this to have that kind of energy. And then we start going down some really curvy, meandering back roads like this, and you expect to arrive at a corner in a 2.6-tonne car and for it to be a bit of a problem. 
And what amazes me is the weighting of the steering and the body control is actually really good. There is one problem, though. Whilst the old Molson was handsome, this one just isn't. What have they done with the face of this car? I mean, seriously, it looks like some sort of 1980s crime watch identikit where they're trying to patch together what a murderer looked like by an old lady who was partially sighted, um, who didn't have her glasses on anyway, and it was night time. It's such an oddity. If I pulled up outside my own house, I would always park it nose facing the hedge. The Mulsan combines hand-built tradition with modern speed. It's a luxury limo for people who want to get behind the wheel themselves. I think what Bentley have done with the engine is certainly not revolution, it's evolution. They've had that six and three quarter for many, many years, and they've just added, added a little bit of refinement and technology and power as time's gone on. And I really hope that that carries on because it's just a wonderful engine. It's everything that you'd want.